Hi guys, I've been asked a lot of questions about the new Fireball's table and its system and all its fixtures and it can be quite confusing so I wanted to do a quick little video showing you how each individual fixture works and how to actually fixture something. I know it could be extremely confusing and it can um, detour you from maybe buying a table like this but I want to show you actually how simple it really is to use. I've started by trying to simplify the fixtures, making them as easy to use as possible. And this right here is what I call the fence blocks. As you can see, they come in a whole bunch of different sizes. They're basically one by two bar stock, and they have a pin on the bottom. Now this pin is removable on everything. So the table uses a three quarter hole, and this is the pin that goes into the hole. And this is a single pin fence block, and it works by, by going simply into the hole like this. This is square, most other tables are round, and it is square so that you can actually clamp to it, or you can use it as a riser block and use it as a shim. And of course they come in different sizes. This is a four by two, and it has pins also. And as you can see that they're offset, and I'll explain why they're offset in a minute, but keep that in mind, and they also just drop in the hole. This allows you to have one stop can do the job of many. It lines up with the work a little bit easier having a long stop like this. And of course we have something like this. This is an offset. As you can see, it has a little step down. This one's really clever. It can do several different things. It also has pins in the bottom, which you can drop it down to the holes, just like this. But what it can give you is a riser. So you can put your material on the top and then get it up to that same elevation and give you a shoulder stop. Or take the pins out and you can put it over here. What this allows you to do is to make 90 degree corners, much like this one's already set up in this configuration. You can drop it in, boom, just like that. And of course, on the other side of this, there's tapped holes and you can permanently lock it into place. I will also get into what this is for in a minute. We'll come back to this one. Now this one is a little bit longer, gives you more surface area to clamp to. The holes are in the bottom also. And you see this set of holes allows you to drop the pins in another location. And so that you can have a 90 degree or a parallel to the grid system, or you can go at a 45, pretty simple. These holes in the top allow you to be able to uh, stack or add on top of the blocks to gain elevation or be able to put a clamp in the top if you just run out of holes or you need to span between hole to hole. Pretty simple, pretty easy to use. That's the general idea of them, but you're probably wondering why they're offset. The offset allows you to put the fixtures together, make 90 degree corners. Here there's maybe a gap because maybe you need to get a tack weld in there. But if you want a zero clearance fit, you could just turn it 90 degrees. Okay, and you can start stacking them or making long fence blocks. Make a whole row of them if you want. You can just continue to add with as many fence blocks as you have available to you. Okay, so moving along down the line, we have something like this. This is the foundation basically to the whole fireball table system. It looks pretty simple. It's just a one by two block but it has an infinity slot, or kind of what I call an infinity slot, which allows you to put a ball lock bolt in the slot and slide it back and forth and get the dimension that you need. I don't like this infinity system. It has its drawbacks, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll come back to that, I promise. But as I wanna show you some of the features. So the block has a hole in the end. This is to allow you to put fixtures at the end of the stop. So this is basically a 90 degree block with a V block inside of it. Now, this is the configuration that it is in its natural form and I've put three pins in here. You can remove or take them out as necessary, allowing you to use the 90 degree V, the 120 degree V, and then set it up in the situation that fits your needs. So you can drop it in like this, put something on the top, go the other direction, put it vertical or access the other V. And this has tapped holes in the side to where you can bolt it to the block and fix it and permanently in that location. Okay, pretty slick. We're gonna move over here to this fixture that I've set up. 
and I'm gonna use this as a demonstration. I'm actually using this currently. This is a picnic table, uh, one side of a picnic table. I have several, several of these to do, so setting up the fixtures is really gonna speed up some time. Why does this block have teeth on the bottom? So this block has been set up with a riser. This riser bolts to that hole I just explained to you, and you can set up this block with any riser you want. You can go tall, short, medium. I got a couple more sizes. Configure it the way you want to. That way you can set up for the project. Let's just say I was gonna bolt this down, just having the infinity system here. Well, what can happen, and it has happened to me, is you put the, put the bolt in the hole, and you're changing in and out. Well, if this isn't clamped down hard enough, this has the potential to slide back. As you're bumping product into it, materials, this will start to move on you. And that has screwed me up more than once. So I wanted to eliminate that problem. And I've done it by adding this. This is the tooth washer. And it simply goes in the holes and on top. Now what happens when you tighten the bolt down, I'm just gonna do this with my hand, hand tight, not even gonna use a wrench. Now it's impossible, no, no matter how hard I hit it, this cannot slide backwards. These teeth are on eighth of an inch increments, which uh, allows me to precision locate where this stop is, especially in relationship to others. So a good example of that is this one. I have this stop set up where I want it to be, and now I wanna set up this exact same stop on the other side of the table. Now typically, to set this stop up, you'd have to pull a tape measure maybe from the edge of the table, or find another reference surface to uh, slide that slide over, and then you're basically using a $25 tape measure on top of a $10,000 table to locate your parts, which seems absolutely ridiculous to me. We should be using the grid pattern of the table to accurately locate our parts. So this one's set up. I have a quick little scale on the side. And now I, we can go over to the other side of the table and match this fixture within seconds. So I can see by looking down to the edge of the table, I can physically see where that washer is in location to the line. And I can tell I need to move it back to this one. And right there, that is in the same exact spot. Now, if when I push this material up, look back here, it lines up perfectly. I didn't even pull the tape measure out. There was no measuring, and now I know they're perfectly even. And it won't slide forward. I just did that with my fingers. You can use a drop-in pin like this into the second hole. That keeps this from twisting because we don't want it to twist. So you just drop this pin in there. It's much cheaper than having another bolt. How easy is that? That almost takes all the hard guesswork out of it. Another good reason for the tooth block is something like this. I've set up this fixture to be uh, hold the center tube in place, but actually I want to move it. Now, can you imagine having a tape measure? You've set these up with, the, with that slot. You've pulled your measurement. You've dialed it all in, you got it where you wanted, you clamped down your bolt, only to find out you want to move it. Okay, so we can move it in a matter of seconds. So all I want to do is move it forward to here, just like that. I can drop it back down to the hole, tighten it back up. No big deal. I didn't have to pull the tape measure out again. I like to put my work onto some shims or blocks, elevate it up off the table. And there we go. It's in the same exact spot as it was. It only took a second. So those are some real quick ways to use the tooth block and explaining the basis around the whole table system. Hopefully this doesn't discourage you guys from getting into welding or fixturing. I wanna to continue to help you guys understand how the system works. But uh, that's a quick little demo. Please leave some questions down below if you have some and I'll be happy to answer them.